Hi, this is the Nano Sarah. It's a great little ADSR envelope generator in 10 HP. Envelopes are an essential part of modular synthesizers. You use them to articulate your voices, to modulate filters, and indeed can, they can be used to create LFOs or anything else like that in your patch. It's a very hands-on module that lets you control all aspects of the envelope generation. And it has a couple of extra surprising features in it, which I'm gonna cover in today's video. Let's take a quick tour of the Sarah, and then we're gonna start hooking it up to different modules and see how it can be used. First of all, it's pretty simple to get your head around. If you're familiar with envelope generators, it has an attack, decay, sustain, and release phase. And that's your classic ADSR envelope, like I'm illustrating on the screen right now. The attack phase determines how long it takes the sound to get loud. Decay decays back down to the level you set at sustain. And then release is kind of the tail of the note. You adjust the time for each of those stages of an envelope using the sliders. And the sustain slider lets you set the level that the envelope will sustain at. And if you send a gate in here on the gate input, it'll hold at that. If you send a trigger in, it'll just trigger the envelope and go straight into the release phase. The Sarah has a couple of other nice features. For example, this little manual gate button here. That's great for testing out your envelopes, but also you can use it as a manual source of modulation in a patch, for example. You can modulate all of these parameters here using these CV inputs. You get an envelope output here. You get a Boolean signal end of cycle here, which goes low when the envelope is generating and goes high when the envelope finishes. In other words, it's at its end of cycle. Finally, there's the out output jack here. What this does is it lets you play around with the voltages on the envelope on the output. So the output is normal to out, and then you can use these knobs here to invert it and reshape it, which is great if you want to create inverted envelopes. That's very useful, for example, for building ducking compressors. There's also this SIG input here, which lets you input a signal, which can be attenuated using these knobs here. We can adjust the speed of the envelope, fast and slow. Now I've hooked up channels one, two, three on the data to the envelope output, the end of cycle Boolean output, and the out output. And I've just got a fast envelope here. And if I hit the button, the manual gate, you'll see on the screen the envelope being generated. Let's patch a clock out of Pam's new workout into the gate input here. So the first thing we see is the green output trace here, channel one, that is the actual envelope being generated. So if I increase the release time, you'll see the release stage gets longer. This way, if I bring it all the way to zero, you can see the shape of the envelope changes. I can increase the decay time, decrease the sustain. There's your instantly recognizable ADSR shape. What's happening on the end of cycle output, this blue trace here? Well, you can see that the end of cycle is high whenever the envelope finishes. So between each of the envelope cycles, it goes high and it goes low when we're generating the envelope. We can use that to do fun things. For example, I will show you some patch ideas using the end of cycle output to trigger other things in your patch. Finally, what's happening with the red trace, this out output here? Let me just turn off the uh, blue end of cycle so we get that out of the way so the green trace is our envelope nothing's happening on the red trace let me just turn this attenuverter here now you can see that the red envelope tracks along with the green envelope so it's mirroring the output and i of course can make it go greater so i can actually scale up the envelope or it could be a scaled down version of the envelope as well what if i turn the attenuverter into the negative space well that's where things start getting fun now I have an inverted envelope on the output. So I'm getting both a positive and mirror image version of that envelope going from zero to minus five volts. Say I didn't want that. Say my circuit didn't want to have a negative voltage going into it. No problem. I can just offset it by a positive voltage amount by turning that there knob, the offset knob. And you'll see now that the red trace moves up the screen. And now I've offset it by plus five volts, and so it's going from zero to plus five instead of minus five to zero. So straight away, this is a very nice feature because we can use one envelope to say, open up a voice, and the other style of envelope, the inverted envelope, maybe tweaks a filter to create some movement on that voice. Let's get some patches going to see that in practice. We'll start with a very, very simple use of an envelope, and that's just to open up a VCA so you can articulate and hear movement in a voice in a synthesizer. 
For this, we're going to use the Instro TSL. It's a very compact and powerful analog synthesizer with a lot of different waveform outputs. And we're going to feed that into the Basta Lakari filter, which is a fabulous filter. I've used it in many of my videos and patches. But best of all, it has its own VCA built in. So we just send it in an envelope into this input jack here. I'm going to just uh, patch the output of the TB3PO applet here on the uh, Ornament and Crime into the Volproctive input. So we got a bit of a melody going on, so it's not quite so boring. And now what I'm going to do is just patch the output here of the gate, which comes out of the TB3PO app into the gate input. So what I want to do is take the output of this envelope here, and I'm going to use these halo cables from MyVolts, which are great to illustrate when you want to see control voltage moving around inside your patch. And I'm going to take the output of, say, the pulse width waveform here, and I'm going to patch it into the input on the filter, on the Akari filter. And so now when I hit play, So there you heard a very basic, you know, melody being generated, but more importantly, the envelope coming out of the uh, Sarah module is opening up the VCA. So that's your standard use, simplest use of an envelope. Let's now use that inverted envelope from the out output. Remember, we've inverted it using this attenuverter here, and you'll see it here on the red trace on data. Let's patch that into something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that output and I'm going to patch it into the pulse width CV input here. Now when I hit play, you'll be able to hear the effect that that inverted envelope has on the pulse width. You'll hear a change in the sound. So you see here we're getting this inverted envelope on the red halo table here, it's pulsing. Of course I can change things around here with the envelope offsetting using these offset controls. So it's a great manual tool for playing. What about that pulse that's generated on the end of cycle output? Can we use that for something? You'll notice here that this LED illuminates uh, every time that end of cycle is reached. So we can use that to trigger things in a, another part of the patch. For example, let's trigger the sample and hold up here to generate different random outputs on the out output there. And we're going to feed them into the envelope shape here and we're going to modulate the parameters in the envelope. So every time a note is generated, an envelope gets fired. But every time an envelope gets fired, it changes the parameters for the next envelope. So every envelope is different. What that means is our patch won't sound so robotic. So in this case, we're going to try and humanize our patch by adding some randomness to the envelope parameters. So I'll patch the end of cycle output here, and I'm going to patch it into the trigger input here on the uh, Kaixa case has a built-in sample and hold that defaults to sampling a noise source. And then I can take the output of the sample and hold and I can patch that into, say, the attack here. How does the CV control of the envelope stages work? If you have the switch set up to norm, it means normalized. So patching into the A input will normalize that input all the way across. So all of the parameters get affected uh, together as a group. If we just have it on independent, you can patch different input voltages into each of those four jacks there, and you can modulate the A, D, S, and OR stages all independently. So if you wanted to, for example, just patch into the release stage and modulate the release length, you could do that. Now I'm gonna show you something very different. For this patch tip, we're going to use the end of cycle output as a clock trigger into a sequential switch. So the Clavis mix switch is many things, and it's an incredibly useful utility module, which I do recommend you get for your setup. In this particular configuration, I'm going to use the CV input as a clock. And what it will do is it will clock between four different inputs to send on the output. But why would I want to do something like this? An oscillator like the TSL has multiple different outputs. It has a sub base square wave output, a triangle output, and a sine wave output as well as the pulse width modulated and wave folded outputs we saw earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to patch four of these into these four inputs here, take an output feed off that sequential switch into my filter. We're going to step between each of those four voices every time the envelope fires. So the notes will play, but it'll be a different sound each time. Let's patch this up. First of all, I'll just patch the output of the end of cycle here into the clock input on my mix switch. And then I'm going to patch the sub oscillator into a one, the uh, triangle oscillator into a two, 
And then we will take the pulse oscillator output there and the wave folded output into there. Then we'll just take this output here and patch it into our filter. And just so we can hear a little bit of rhythm to it, I'm also gonna patch in this kick all as a kick drum so that we'll actually hear a little bit of rhythmic kick to it. Let's hit play. Wow, that sounds completely different and pretty darn cool as well. Let's take a look at what's happening. As you can see here, the end of cycle trigger is lighting up the halo cable and is cycling through all four of the inputs on the bit switch. And it's going through them sequentially. Now you can configure the mix switch to also be CV controlled. We could look at that in a second. What it's doing is it's taking the wave folded outputs, the pulse width output, the sub output, and the triangle output and just jumping between them. One of the ways we can use an envelope is to enhance our kick drum. And I'm using the Bafaco kick hall here, which while it's a great little kick drum module in 6HP, can sometimes struggle to come through in the mix as a punchy kick. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the output of this other envelope, the out output here, and I'm gonna patch that into the decay here. So while the output of this uh, other envelope isn't of course synced to the kick itself, it'll come in at certain points during the kick so we'll get this interesting modulation of the kick going on. Let's take a listen this time. Yeah, a lot more punch to our kick there, isn't there? Yeah. Take a listen if I take it out. It doesn't quite have the same boomy effect. Now let's look at how we can use a slow envelope on the Serra to do manual modulation of some other module. So this time we're not actually going to use the Serra as a articulation envelope to open up a VCA. I've just programmed in a very simple ADSR envelope here over here in the Ornaments and Crime to do that. And the uh, TB3PO app is just going to trigger that envelope instead of triggering the Serra. Instead, what I've done is I've set the Serra into slow mode and set this to be a very slow envelope. And what we'll do is we're going to switch over to using the Bastel Pizza Oscillator. This is a fantastic FM oscillator from Bastel Instruments. Let's take the output of our envelope here. And what we're going to do is we're going to patch it into the wave shaping input here on the um, pizza. So now when I hit the manual button, we're going to get this very slow envelope here going into the wave shaper. First of all, let's take a listen to what this sounds like without any modulation. Now let's do a manual modulation. I'm going to hit the manual gate button. I can also patch it into the control input here and use that to modulate one parameter. And then I can take the output of my inverted envelope, which I've set my attenuverter to invert here, and patch that into, for example, the FM index here. So we'll get dual modulation going on. Or we can patch it into our filter. So let's patch it into the stereo spreading. Now let's look at using rhythmic modulation. In this patch tip, what I'm gonna do is use the Sarah to open the VCA as normal. We're gonna have the output of the Bastel Pizza going into our filter, like in the previous example. But this time what I want to do is use that end of cycle output to trigger another envelope, this time one coming out of the ornament and crime over here. I'm going to patch that into the filter over here, or we can play around with patching it into the, the pizza as well, to create some rhythmic modulation. So one envelope is triggering another envelope. So the sound is gonna be constantly changing and being modulated. This something is something really, really fun to do because what you're doing is you're adding more and more movement to your sound. So it can get very, very organic and dynamic. How are we gonna do this? First of all, let's patch the output of the trigger from TB3PO into the gate input here. 
as before. So now we will actually trigger this envelope here, which will open up the VCA over here. We will take, in this case, another halo cable, just so you can see this being generated. We'll take that end of cycle output there and patch it into the clock input here for this attack decay envelope, which I've configured on Ornament and Crime. And then we can take that attack decay envelope using this cable over here. And why don't we just patch it into the volt per octave input on the Akari. So that's going to kind of close the filter as we're playing and we can turn up the resonance and have a bit of fun with that. So let's see what happens when I hit play. You start to see this being triggered, the light going on and off in the halo cable. Every time the main envelope finishes, this envelope here, and then that triggers this envelope over here, which I'm using to modulate the filter cutoff. So I can get that squelchy kind of acid sound. Another example I want to show you is how you can use an envelope to create a ducking effect. Now, what is ducking? It's using a compressor or a VCA to pull down the volume of one signal in response to another audio signal. And typically it's used to make your kick punch through when you're making techno. So how do we do this with the Nano Serra? This time what I want to do is use the inverted envelope that I can generate on the out output on the Serra module. And that inverted envelope is going to go into this dub for VCA here. Now you can use any VCA you want. I'm just going to use this as a very simple example of how a VCA will be set up. I'll just clean up the patch cables real quick here. So we're going to patch the output of our mixer here, which will mix the four oscillator outputs from the TSL as we were doing previously. Instead of patching it in directly into the filter, we're going to patch it into this VCA over here. So I'm just going to take that B output and patch it into the in input on the VCA. And then the output of the VCA can go into the filter and into the rest of the audio path. I'll clock the big switch using just a, another trigger output from Pam's new workout. And this time, every time the kick is generated, I want to send a gate input into the Sarah to generate that envelope. For simplicity, I'll just take another output here. I could mute the kick output, but they're all on the same clock anyway. So now, if we take a look at the scope now, you can see the green trace, of course, is the envelope that we'd expect to see for opening a VCA to play the sound. But I want to invert that. So what I'm going to do is set my offset to zero, and I'm going to invert it by pulling the attenuverter all the way down. And then I'm going to offset it back up by five volts, which means when the envelope is basically at its highest voltage, the VCA will sound and the oscillator will come through. But as soon as the kick gets triggered, the envelope goes down and that pulls the voltage down on the VCA and then you'll be able to hear the kick. Let's patch the inverted envelope, which is that red trace, into the CV input here on this VCA. If the level of ducking is too intense, you just adjust the attenuverter to taste and shape the envelope using these controls. Now remember, of course, the envelope's inverted. So this is with basically no ducking taking place. And I'm going to dial up the depth of the inverted envelope, so a little bit more. I can pull back the sustain level so it's not quite as intense. We could make it a very short, snappy envelope. But you hear there a much longer envelope. So basically, this allows you to create that ducking effect or that kind of compressor effect uh, using a VCA and using an inverted envelope, and you can just adjust it to taste. And of course, you can modulate these parameters here, and that will also allow you to adjust the ducking effect as the notes play. Another patch idea is modulating the shape of the envelope using an LFO but then routing that through the SIG input and the out so that you can attenuvert that LFO, for example, so that it's not quite so extreme. If we were to just simply take this bipolar LFO here from the uh, output of the built-in LFO on the Kaixa case and patch that straight in here, we would very quickly find that our envelope is practically unusable. The envelope is on all the time, so we have no real shaping going on on the sound. Let's patch that LFO into the SIG input, and we'll just attenuvert it so that it's much slower. Let's take a look at that red trace there, and we're going to offset it so it's positive. Well, we could just leave it to be a little bit negative so that the release will increase and decrease a little bit. And we'll just take a very attenuated version of that, and we will patch that 
because that's this red output here is on this channel three of the Mordax data. Now we're going to patch it into the release and let's take a look at the envelope shape and listen to the sound. Still pretty extreme, so I'm going to just offset it a bit more so I get an envelope and a sound to taste. So there you see you can use this SIG input as a very handy attenuverter and offset to modulate some of the parameters on the module. So you don't need to have to get one of those modules in here in your uh, setup. And when modulating the envelope parameters, a little goes a long way. So you really do want to attenuvert those uh, bipolar LFOs like this one here, for example. Well, I hope you found today's video useful. By all means, leave some questions and comments down below if you have any questions on this video or indeed any other video I have made. I try and respond to every question and comment that people leave. Thanks very much for watching today's video and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.